Alan Galbraith, board member here at the California Auto Museum. And today we're at the Real Car Collection, which is cars that were used in movies. And we have Tony Hunt with us. Tony, thanks for coming down today. Absolutely. Now, is this your car here? This is my car. This is one that we used in the Ford versus Ferrari movie. Now, that was a great movie. Tell us about what, uh, what this car is and what, what's the quick story behind it. Well, this car obviously was one of the original Shelbys uh, back in the day. Uh, this was originally an AC, what they call a Cobra, 1963. And uh, this was the iconic car that Ken Miles drove in his early stages of racing career and obviously played a big role in the first part of the movie. And is this a, one, a real AC Cobra? Is this one that was used, made for the movie? This one is a replica, a super performance replica. It's got a 347 cubic inch engine in it, originally a 289 that they pumped up to 347. And um, it's, a, it's a great car to drive, a lot of fun. We did a lot of the filming at Willow Springs down in Southern California with this car. And uh, this was also a car that Christian Bale got to do a little driving in as well. Now, you got to do a lot of the stunt driving, a lot of the racing scenes for the film. How did you come to be a stunt driver? Do you just walk into a studio one day and say, hi, I'm a stunt driver. Do you come at it from racing? Have you always been into cars? Tell us that story. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of a unique industry. It's a very tight knit group of uh, individuals that kind of seed themselves into the, in the industry one way or the other. Uh, for me, fortunately, I did a lot of racing uh, back in the day and uh, was circulating with guys that were kind of journeymen, uh, not only racing wise, but also in the film industry and um, they happened to have a job that was happening in North Carolina when I was there uh, at Talladega uh, and uh, it happened to be uh, uh, Talladega Nights, the movie. And so uh, I was at, at that point, I was living there and I was doing a lot of stock car racing myself and very familiar with obviously the surroundings and with the cars and stuff and happened to get with the right people and sort of network uh, with that group of people. And sure enough, there we were doing uh, the first big, big movie that I've ever done. Now you, did you get, uh, did you seek out to do the, the Ford versus Ferrari movie? Did they contact you? How did that, how did that happen? No, I mean, uh, the gentleman that was actually the, the guy who sort of put the roster together as far as all the stunt drivers was a good friend of mine, Robert Nagel. And he was appointed as the stunt coordinator on that movie. And he just assembled a great group of guys that were all either affiliated with the movie, had uh, uh, either some sort of lineage as far as their fathers being involved in the movie, or just some background as far as racing. And he really wanted to put together a group of guys that not only had a little bit of savvy with the film industry, but more or less with the racing industry to really give it an authentic uh, sort of approach in regards to the guys that were behind the wheels had some familiarity with uh, racing themselves. Outstanding. Now, is when you're doing a movie like that, is the is the driving different than just hey, go out on the track and go fast? I mean, explain explain the difference between driving for the camera and driving for yourself. Well, that's the thing about it is I mean, you kind of take your ego right out of it because it's more of a choreographed thing that you have to be on your marks and you have to be in a certain position at all the time where in racing all those variables change and so we had a playbook every day that we kind of went by and he'd say hey we're going to go on page 52 and this is going to be where you guys need to be positioned this is where the cars need to be and so every day we were on a somewhat of a storyboard so to speak in regards of what we were actually filming so it is very different you have to have a different mindset in regards to how you're filming things and your approach behind the wheel because you're doing things a lot on repetition and trying to get the shot in different camera angles and things of that nature so uh, if you're off here or there it really messes up the uh, productivity of the day now when you're shooting a film uh, are you uh, on set all the time is this a, a different uh, group that goes out and shoots just the racing scenes it just depends uh, a lot of times uh, as a second unit with just doing the stunts and some of the driving stuff, you're usually away from what they call the first unit, which means the first unit are the actors and the people that are doing all the dialogue and stuff. This was a somewhat unique film, uh, different than what I've normally worked on, and where the stunt or the uh, the stunt group, which is second unit and the first unit, were working together. So a lot of times, uh, for instance. Christian and Matt would be doing their dialogue and they'd say cut, they'd take a break and then Christian would hand me the Ken Miles helmet and I'd put it on and we'd go out and do the driving scene and then back and forth, vice versa. So a lot of times we were there on set just on call just to be ready for that next shot and we kind of trade off somewhat systematically but like on the day on a movie set you have to be ready to go 
12, 14 hour a days uh, ready to go and, and be, uh, be prepared. Now you mentioned Willow Springs, was it shot at any other tracks? Yeah, several other tracks. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, we uh, they put together the Le Mans track in different uh, settings in uh, North America here. We didn't go to Le Mans to actually film the movie because that setting now is not period appropriate or as far as the scenery goes from what it was back in the 60s. So they uh, they chose uh, different locations. We were back in Georgia uh, doing uh, some of the Mulsane Strait on a very rural road about seven miles long that we shot there and then we'd go over to a, uh, a, a functioning racetrack called Grand Prix which is outside Savannah on a bit of an island and we connected a few of the S corners and a few other obstacles and thing uh, as far as the racetrack goes with that and then we came back to Southern California to Agua Dolce Airport where they reconstructed a 700 foot long three-story high uh, paddock area where the uh, where basically all the pit stalls were and the whole pit road area that uh, they had back in Le Mans period appropriate with the uh, press box and all the pit stalls and all the other neat things that went along with that uh, pit road there that's so infamous at Le Mans. Now what was your favorite part of shooting this movie? You know, I think there was there were several of them. Obviously driving, uh, you know, the Cobra for the first time was uh, very um, emotional. And uh, every time you'd get in the car and you'd strap in, you'd put that gear on and uh, and you'd get ready to uh, for the, the, the director to say action. I mean, obviously that's an emotional part, uh, not only trying to recreate that um, iconic period of time as far as auto racing goes, but to um, play the part of such an iconic figure as Ken Miles and uh, double Christian Bale, I mean, obviously is a is a once in a lifetime thing as well. So there was several of them, certainly driving the GT40 uh, and the night scenes and some of the rain scenes were very, um, uh, they were thrilling to say the least. Uh, they were on the seat of the pants. Uh, you know, you never knew what was gonna be the outcome of it, but you're always trying to be at the right place at the right time, go as fast as you can and make it look right for the camera and try to keep the thing uh, in one piece. So at any time, did did the action, the driving uh, and the stunt work really push your limits, get you close to anything that you thought was dangerous or really test your uh, abilities as a driver? I think it tested our sanity on numerous days. Uh, you know, there were times when, you know, the director's yelling faster, 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 and we're all trying to stay in line. But I think some of the, the nights that we did, uh, the rain scenes were probably the, the most uh, on the edge uh, nights and days that we dealt with. And those were days that we we look back now and we go, boy, I'm sure glad we got to back of the hotel in one piece. But, you know, you're dealing with so many different elements. And when you're trying to create a rain scene, normally you're only in a certain area that the rain is, uh, you know, impactful. So you start out in the dry and you create all this speed to get to that area so it looks great on film. And then you go into this huge area of uh, rain that they create superficially with these big sprinklers overhead. And usually you go into a water uh, area that's usually uh, already got a layer of water. So you instantly hydroplane when you go into that area and the car reacts to that obviously adversely and you really don't know the direction of the car or where it's gonna go when it does land on the other side of the drive. So those were, those were pretty hair raising evenings and, and days and fortunately we got out of those uh, without any, without any uh, crashes or uh, damage. But you know, those are those are days that uh, you know you're on the edge, trying to get as much as you can out of the cars and as much as you can for uh, for good cinematic uh, thrill. And you're dealing with uh, you know period appropriate helmets that really don't protect you, and you're in cars that only got you know period appropriate seat belts, and none of the creature comforts or full containment or uh, you know Hans devices or head and neck restraint contained. So um, you're, you're dealing with all those things that a lot of guys back in the day uh, didn't see in another light of day. So you're having to take that into perspective as well and be, uh, you know, be, be mindful of that too. So what was it like to work with Christian Bale on a movie set? You know, it was great. Um, like I had mentioned, uh, the, the first unit and the second unit shared a lot of days together. So he was, uh, you know, uh, just, a, just a great human being. Uh, and I'm not saying that just uh, because I had an association with him or I was able to double his character or whatever. But, you know, we'd be sitting there small talk uh, when they weren't shooting. And then to see him evolve into that character so quickly, I'm just like, 
okay, now I can see why they, they earn what they earn and, and it's, it's very validated and deserving. But uh, they, he, was a, he was a great individual, just a great guy to work with, um, super friendly, um, very humble. Um, and just a neat guy to sort of see his craft and then he would see mine and, and you know what we did and be um, encouraging and uh, um, very respectful for uh, what we did and it was a great combination and uh, we had a great time and it was a it was a thrill for me obviously to be around him and Matt and those guys and see what they do but also to see what good people they were. So yeah, Christian, um, you know, he was, uh, it was funny because at the very beginning, you know, we were doing some coaching with him at Willow Springs and just doing some lead fall. He really wanted to get behind the wheel and see what it was really like to see the forces and kind of see the, uh, the whole sort of visual it was from inside the car. But, uh, you know, we, we did some lead follows and I had a hard time getting him off the racetrack. He wanted to stay on the racetrack and play all day and have some fun. But uh, he really got engaged into the character. And it was uh, for us to see him do that and not just come in and do the dialogue was really, um, you know, was really encouraging and, and had a lot of respect for him to do that because, uh, you know, to see him get in that mode and come out on a hot day in the middle of the summer at Willow Springs and get behind the wheel um, was really neat. And uh, he, he really enjoyed it. And I think that it played a big part of the success of the movie.